I'm Sue from Sue Sherman Quilts and I'm here to show you how to make this fun elf style Christmas stocking. It's a good size for Santa to stuff with all those goodies on Christmas Eve. And although it's pretty enough to decorate your house, it's also designed to stand up to years of normal family use. The pattern is just called Christmas stocking and it's designed to use this beautiful selection of Northcott fabrics from the Mirror Christmas Collection by Michelle Design Works. The stocking is quite easy to make and I'll walk you through each step of the way in this video. I hope you enjoy making it as much as I do and that your family enjoys using them for many years to come. Happy quilting! So when I open up my pattern, I get the pattern booklet and then the individual pattern pieces. Now I've cut these out, just cut them out around the outside along the solid lines. And in the case of this piece, which is, is the main body of the stocking, I've cut it out around the solid lines around the outside and then attach them together with tape. So at the joints, I've cut one of the, of the uh, dash double dot lines and the other one I've left a little lip here so I've got something to, uh, to attach it with. There's a lot of writing on this particular fabric, so you really need to make sure that you know which way is up. All of the pattern pieces have up marked on them, uh, and up in this sense, in, in this case, means uh, up on the pattern direction of the fabric. So this one goes this way because I can see that the writing is that way up. And I just want to show you. Um, so I'm going to use these weights and I just throw a few of them there on my, my pattern um, to hold them down. And then on the straight lines, and there are a lot of them, I'm just going to use my ruler here and my, my rotary cut and I'm going to cut along the straight lines. And then what's left is the, um, the curved lines. Now if you're really good with a rotary cutter, you can actually cut these curved lines with a, a small diameter rotary cutter. Um, but if you're not good with that, then you can just use the scissors to cut those curved lines. And it really won't take terribly long. Uh, the pattern does show you what fabrics to cut out of, or what pieces to cut out of what fabrics to get the various pattern pieces together. And here are all the pieces that I'm going to use for um, for this, so I've got, um, I'm going to use, I think it's, um, it's D, it's, it's stocking D, so I've got the, um, the toe and heel in that fabric, I've got this lovely floral with the green background for the actual stocking, I've got the tab, one, also matching the toe and heel, I've got the, um, so I've cut two, one, two out of the, uh, the cuff fabric to go up there, and also an interfacing. Now this is regular sewing interfacing, so it's only sticky on one side, but um, if all you have is, is uh, double-sided interfacing, I'm sure you can make that work. But you could also use just not sticky interfacing and, and um, pin it on. And then the last thing is the lining. So um, I've got, I just, like when I'm making Christmas stockings, it's a very special thing. So I, even the lining, I want to be nice and I want it to match. But um, if you're looking to get more stockings out of the same amount of fabric, you could Instead of lining them with this fabric, you could line them with a plain fabric, and then uh, then you can get more stockings out of the uh, out of the amount of fabric that you've got. So moving forward, the very first thing we're going to do is so we're we're going to take the pieces for oops for one half, so this will be the one of them will be the front, one of them will be the back. 
So what we're going to do is assemble the front of the stocking separately and the back of the stocking separately and start by making what is essentially a quilt top. So these three pieces, you've got the main body and the heel and the toe, are going to be the quilt top for the front of the stocking. And there's one curved seam. I apologize for that. It's the only curved seam that you have to worry about in the stockings and I'll show you how to do it. It's not that hard. And we're going to start just by doing a stay stitching line along there. And stay stitching is just inside the seam allowance so it's going to be a scant quarter inch and just sewing a straight seam at a normal stitch length along there. So now I've come over to my sewing machine. I've got my stitch length on at about two, so just an ordinary sewing stitch length. I've got my um, thread ends in my fingers because I'm sewing onto just one thickness of fabric, so I want to make sure my thread doesn't get stuck in there. Put my um, my presser foot down and I'm a scant, so just under a quarter inch away from the, uh, from, the from the edge. And I'm proceeding to stitch fairly small, short stitch length, slow, slow stitching so I can do it round, but it, it's really quite uh, forgiving as long as you don't go to, uh, as long as you don't go over a quarter of an inch. Is just clip. So I'm going to clip, um, I don't know, half inch, as close as I can get to the uh, to the actual seam without cutting it. There we go. I think I might have done that stay stitching a little too far away, but it's it's actually quite forgiving. Um, and now I'm going to stitch or to pin together the two pieces. And in my head, I imagine the uh, the quarter inch seam allowance along there. But with this stay stitching line now, I can actually um, it's actually pretty easy to do. So I can um, move this uh, the body piece kind of into place because I can now bend bend the seam around in the direction that it needs to go. See that does it does line up quite nicely. It's worth doing taking some time to get this done. Um, personally, I'm not terribly fond of doing this sort of thing, and I'm sure most of you aren't. So my uh, I don't mind spending a little extra time getting the pins in. If I know that it means I'm not going to have to pull the seam out and do it again later. So now I'm, I'm starting at the seam, um, starting at one edge. I'm going to be stitching just outside the stay stitching line, starting with a lock stitch. Um, I like to pull my pins out as I go. But That's uh, a personal preference. So trying to stay outside the uh, the line, but it, it's basically just an easy seam. You want to sew it fairly slowly. stitch at the end. 
So I've taken the seam and I've ironed it and see how nice and flat that lies. Now it's not perfect at this end but that doesn't matter. This is Think of this as a quilt top so I'm, we're going to be uh, trimming along there anyway so it'll all even out. Uh, next thing I want to do is sew this seam and it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to match the notches. Um, and I'm going to uh, put a couple pins in here and take it over to my sewing machine and sew again a quarter of an inch away. So now I have the heel and the toe of my uh, my quilt top sewn on, and I pressed both the both seams. They're both pressed uh, towards the body, and uh, this one could go either way. But I like that they're both the same. I think it it looks um, it looks neater. So then I'm lining up my quilt top on top, and what I've got is the quilt. Uh, backing which will become the lining of the stocking making sure of course that the uh, the the top of the fabric so the the orientation of the text is up and the uh, uh, the pattern is face down on my mat then I've got the backing the batting and now I've got the quilt top on here and again the uh, the text is is up that way. And now I'm going to pin and I'm just going to use these, these uh, big quilting pins to, to pin baste it. Um, if, you, if you're working with a really small domestic sewing machine uh, you might find that you'll want to use uh, straight pins or thread basting but if you've got a larger throat on your domestic sewing machine you probably won't need to do that with something this small. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot more of the quilt back than we're really going to need and the reason that I've done that is to give you stability particularly in this part if you uh, if it were cut closer to there it, it would be um, it could be a little bit difficult to keep everything nice and flat and you could end up with some distortion in this area of the of the stocking and this this area you particularly don't want to be distorted because you need it to to uh, just to stand up and be um, uh, be nice and and um, uh, solid so that it, it's not going to get um, after years of use you want it to still be in the same position that it was at the beginning one of the things that you could do to put a little interest in this is to add some metallic thread um, I have to admit my green metallic thread's not a very good match. So I am going to use some gold metallic thread, which I think actually does look pretty good on this fabric. Um, but I could equally have, have used um, a green or, or a red or white or a non-metallic gold thread here I think would, would equally look good. Uh, I am going to demonstrate this with the metallic thread because I think it's the most difficult of, of the selections to use and, and I'm sure that you're probably wanting to see how I would do that. So I threaded my sewing machine with the gold metallic thread. I apologize, it's a little difficult to see on the video. In my bobbin, I have a mono poly thread. So it's a, a single filament of polyester and it's invisible. Um, because I really don't want to be using um, the metallic thread in the bobbin and the monopoly doesn't show. It, it just, um, it, it's not visible at all from the front. The, if you're going to use monopoly thread, and I do recommend it with the metallic, when you wind your bobbin you need to wind at one third speed, very, very slowly and you need to only wind the bobbin about one-third full um, and it's very thin so that, that's an awful lot of thread anyway. So I'm using a standard size needle. It's, I changed it I think the last time I sewed so I'm not going to change it today. It should be still fairly sharp. It's I think a size 14. 
and um, I have everything ready to go. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start, uh, actually I should probably start at the side, let's do that. Starting near the side then, and uh, I'm just going to do a meandering um, quilting stitch. Uh, I have uh, seen it done with um, straight lines making uh, diagonals like a diamond pattern. That looked really good. But uh, I think for the metallic thread, uh, we really don't want to gild the lily. I don't want to do anything really fancy with the metallic thread and this lovely fabric as well. Um, I'm just going to use a, a pretty simple meandering uh, stitch. able to see the uh, the metallic thread. What I can see from close up here is just a glint of, of gold and it looks very pretty. So now I have my two stocking pieces, the front and the back, and they're all quilted. You can't really see anything from the back because of the invisible thread. Um, so the next step is to cut all the way around. Now um, I've done quite a lot of my quilting really close to the edge here, so I'm just going to cut out around this piece. But depending on how close to the edge you've gotten with your quilting, you may want to do just a line of sewing all the way around the edge before you do your cutting. Um, I, could, I could cut this with my rotary cut, or I cut it with my scissors, it really doesn't matter, whichever is going to give me the best line and whichever is easiest for you. Now I have both pieces cut out and um, they, they look really nice. Uh, I don't, uh, part of me doesn't even want to cover up the, uh, the inside but there luckily will be another stocking that is this pattern so uh, we'll get to see it on the outside too. Um, so the next thing to do is line the pieces up and pin them together. Um, we're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance which can be you know, um, it can get a little bigger or a little smaller depending on, on the need. We want to make sure that everything lines up. And the most important thing is we want to share, ensure that all of the pieces are flat. There's nothing um, distorted or twisted or, um, or pulled out of shape in any way. So I'm going to pin um, all the way around um, in the direction well, in a direction so that I can take them out as I sew. So I'm going to start with a lock stitch and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around.
So the next thing I need to do is trim and um, all these seams on the inside here to make sure that when the stocking is turned the right way out that they'll they'll lie nice and flat. So I'm going to, all of the seams that go in, I'm going to do a little bit of clipping. And I'm not going all the way to the edge there, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch, a couple millimeters away from the stitching line. I don't want to get too close to it. Now when I go around an outside curve, I'm going to trim the seam allowance a little bit. And that will just take out some of the fullness. So there's a little bit of an inside curve here on the bottom. Just two or three clips there. And a little. There's another outside curve, so I'm going to trim it fairly close to the... Well, I'm going to take out maybe half, a little less than half of the seam allowance. So I'm left with about an eighth of an inch, about three millimeters. And this is especially important as we go around the, the really tight curve on the outside or on the on the tip of the toe. And I'm gonna even on the inner curve here, I'm gonna trim it fairly close and then clip fairly close here because I really want to be able to get um, get a nice turn when I turn it the right way up. Okay, get rid of this mess, and now we're ready to turn. So I'm just going to reach inside, I'm going to get my finger up as far as it'll go and, uh, and pull it. Still a pin there. That's why it won't turn properly. There we go. Now as we get towards the toe, um, the very tip of the toe um, needs a little bit of help and the best thing that you can do is just try to pull it. Um, I always keep my fingernails at a good length to use as a tool for this sort of thing. Um, at some point you may not be able to pull it anymore and you might need to push it through with, with a pencil or something like that. Um, it, it can take a little while to do this and just need to be patient and, uh, and do it slowly and it will come. You don't want to do anything that might risk um, damaging the fabric. I'm going to stick this uh, highlighter pen inside and um, Oh, there we go. It's coming out easily now. Oh, looks like I clipped one of my stitches. 
I'm going to have to go back and fix that. But um, as you can see, it's turned out nice and flat. And uh, I'll probably give that a little bit of an iron just to uh, make sure it, it, uh, it stays flat. And now we're ready to go to the next step. Now I have an opportunity to do the name, to, to embroider a name on my uh, cuff. And I've taken the cuff and I've, I've uh, fused the interfacing onto the back of it. I'm not showing you that step because you may have a different interfacing for me and I don't want to confuse you by uh, showing you what potentially isn't the right uh, directions for that. So one of the ways of getting the name on is to use couching. Now, I happen to have a couching foot. Uh, you may or may not have one, but uh, if you do have one, it's really handy. And so I'm going to start by showing you how to do that. So I've, I've roughly put a little square on here to show, to center it. And I've done that using just a, uh, a dressmaker's pencil. Uh, this is something that I can erase later. And I've written my... Uh, my words on there, you may not be able to see it, but I can see it and that's uh, going to give me a little bit of help in order to do my couching. So let's see how this works. I'm going to do um, a lock stitch here, or at least a couple of stitches in place. And now I am going to run my couching around my, my uh, letters. It's a braided cord. I found that if you use yarn or something like that, it tends to unravel when you couch with it. Um, you, you might need to experiment with that. You can always couch by hand. And couching by hand, you're basically just lying the piece of braid or wool on your fabric and you're stitching over it with a, with a web stitch. But uh, this looks like it might work, so let's continue on. Um, I'm going to go just link all the letters together. at the end. Um, it's not terrible. I think we're going to keep it. But there are other ways that you can do this. And as I showed you in the book, if you don't have a couching foot, you can couch by hand. You could also just lay this down and use um, a zigzag stitch over it uh, on, on uh, any sewing machine. You'd need to use a walking foot for that. Uh, you could embroider it by hand. You can embroider it by machine. Um, and there's a lot of different ways, and I'm sure you can think of other ways that I haven't mentioned here. So one of the next things we need to do is to make a uh, the tab. So we've got our two two inch by six inch piece of fabric, and all I've done is folded it once in the center, and then folded the two sides in, and then I've given it a really good press. So now I'm going to take this and sew it on my sewing machine. I'm just going to sew on the two sides. And then I'm going to fold it this way and pin it right here at the top on the inside, like that.
Well, I'm going to sew it first, and then I'm going to pin it there. And the next thing that I'm going to do uh, when I'm at my sewing machine is I'm going to take these two pieces, and I'm going to sew this side edge. So I'm going to sew this one, and then I'm going to sew this one, both along the, uh, the triple notched edge. And I'm going to press those seams to one side. Now I have the cuff, uh, so I have the, uh, the cuff and the cuff lining. This one is the one where I uh, couched the name, so this is the cuff, and this one's the cuff lining. Now I am going to put them together, and I need the right sides to be together, and it's going to go together like that. So matching the seam, and like that. And I'm going to put some pins in and I'm going to stitch along this zigzag um, seam first um, after I put some pins in here. And I don't really need to do a lot of pins. I think just maybe one in each point will be enough to uh, make sure that nothing goes too wonky. So I just want to check that everything's kind of flat before I do that. Um, yeah, this one's not all that flat. There we go. Um, and now I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way along the bottom zigzag edge of the uh, cuff. So now I need to trim and turn this cuff. And I'm going to do all my trimming from this side because it's a little easier to see the, uh, the sewing when I'm on the side of the uh, interfacing. So first I'm going to clip each of these downward V's, being careful not to clip the stitching. You'll notice that not all my seams are exactly the same seam allowance, but what I have tried to do is make sure all of the lines are straight. So the next thing I'm going to do is trim these outer points, and I need to trim off a lot of fullness, so I'm going to start by trimming like that. So I'm basically doing um, you have to imagine the, end, the uh, seam allowance folding over into this when it gets inside and you want to make it so that um, it'll all fit in there. So I just imagine it all folded over and make sure that I trimmed it enough so that it will fit inside. We are. And now we need to pull this inside, and this is a little bit different than, than uh, turning the toe because we've got these sharp, sharp points. And what I do, well, I, I put my thumb inside and my finger on top and grab the two, grab the point 
that way and push it through. And I'm just going to do all of them like that. And then once that is done, you, they all still need some work. And when I was a lot younger and my mother taught me how to do this, she always said to use a pin and to pull it from the outside. So you need to be very careful not to pull any of the fabric away from the seam. So almost if you can imagine, I'm almost trying to push with the pin rather than pull, but I'm doing it from the outside. And um, again, this is one of those things where if you do it too aggressively, you're going to end up making a lot of work for yourself. So it's best to just take it nice and slow and do them all. Have a cup of tea <laughs> if that helps. And um, pull up all of the um, all of the points, and then give it a good press. So now I have the uh, the cuff with with the cuff lining. It's all assembled and turned the right way up. And I have the uh, the stocking. I have the tab inside and I've stitched around the outside of it and it's pinned on there at, at the back side of the stocking. Now what I've done is I've turned this right side out and I'm going to take it with its right side out inside the stocking which is also right side out and I'm going to stick it inside here. And actually before I do that I'm going to mark the front. and then pin it front and back so at the back it's it's going to go right where the uh, the tab is Now I'll put a few more pins in and what I'd like you to note is that it does look a little bit like the cuff is too big to be on the inside here. You need to do a little work to sort of stretch in sections, stretch the, uh, the stocking so that the cuff will fit. And you need that to happen because ultimately when it gets turned to the outside the cuff is going to be on the outside. and and uh, so it, it will it will be the right size then. It does seem a little bit like the cuff is too big when it's inside like this. So I'm going to finish pinning this. Then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around the outside at the top. And once again I'm using my free arm. So I'm going to sew it like this. If you don't have a free arm, you're probably going to be better off to sew it from the inside like that. But with the free arm, I'm going to sew it from the outside and certainly from the point of view of making this video, you'll, you'll get a better view of it if I do this. So I'm going, as I stitch, and I'm going to do a pretty generous quarter inch on this um, just because I want to make sure um, that I catch everything. And um, I need, as I sew, I'm going to make sure that I pull everything a little bit just stretch everything out a little bit so that everything lines up and I'm not getting any buckling or puckering, especially in the cuff. Now here's where I'm going over 
a seam plus a seam in the cuff plus the um, the, the little uh, hanging tab. So uh, I need to go slowly over this hump. There we go. To the top of the stocking so what I need to do now is just turn it inside out and first I'm going to press it like that so that it um, so that this this seam is um, nice and flat and then turn it out but when I turn it I'm not uh, I'm going to be leaving about a three-eighths of an inch, almost a centimeter here at the top on the inside so that the cuff sort of looks like a uh, binding from the inside and then from the outside you get uh, the nice turned over edge. So um, I can turn it down a little bit more. I need to also make sure that the, uh, the writing doesn't look out of place. There we go. Uh, so the last thing that I'm going to do is take this little um, little bell and I'm going to sew it onto the uh, the curled over part of the toe. And I could, I imagine you could put something on the points. I think that might be the sort of thing you might want to put little Christmas ornaments or something on there. If you've got little kids, that could be. Uh, a fun thing to do but basically this is the finished uh, stocking and and you could do other embellishments as you choose